this evening. Thank you to the parents and thank you to the participants as well. So starting with the name of Allah, who is the most merciful and the most beneficial. Our Prophet, peace be upon said, recite the Quran, it will interpret your day of judgment. Now I would like to call Zahra Khan for the recitation of the few verses of Holy Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تدغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض ضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة ونخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريحان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان صلى الله عليه وسلم The stars and the trees bow down in submission for the sky, he raised it high and set the balance of justice, so that you do not defraud the scales weighed with justice and do not give short measures. He laid out the earth for all beings, and it are fruit, palm trees with dead stalks, and grain with hugs, and aromatic plants. Then which of your Lord's favor will you humans and things both deny? Gravity. Gravity is just an art on a different canvas, but is not appreciated by society. I would like to call Susan to deliver her speech on gravity is an art. <laughs> then why don't you consider graffiti as art when it is the same thing except that the streets are your canvas and a can of spray paint is your paintbrush? Good afternoon everyone. I am Suzanne Kazi from Habib Girls College and the reason I am here today is to talk about graffiti as an art. The word graffiti comes from the Latin word graphium which means to write. It was originally used by an archaeologist to describe drawings and paintings in the Roman catacombs. Usually graffiti is very much confused with vandalism. Vandalism in simple words is the, dis is the destruction of someone's property. Graffiti, on the other hand, is just an appealing technique that helps convey deep messages. Additionally, I believe that people must start perceiving more about graffiti as an art. The reason for my statement is that a great deal of talent is required to create brilliant artwork. Take Retina, for example, who has gone beyond real imagination to decorate buildings such as the 21-story building in Mexico City. Similarly, an artist named Banksy has had his beautiful work shown in galleries such as the Sotheby's in London. However, opponents consider graffiti as an immoral skill due to the reason that it defaces the public property and damages them. Uh, besides, an artist named Gunk, who has been creating graffiti for nearly a decade, refutes this statement and says, I don't consider it as, as me doing something illegal. I'm not a criminal. I'm not a violent person. I just enjoy making art. As a final observation, I believe that graffiti needs to be protected at all costs, and one should aim to develop an exceptional understanding about graffiti as an art. As stated by Robert Montgomery, the flood will lift the ghost like ether in dead air. The, all the names will be erased from the billboards, the theaters, the magazines, the fires, and the monuments. You live by myths of immortality, and your myths are not safe. Thank you. The world we've been thinking is too strong. This was not as demanding and critical as that of our parents, siblings, or spouse. This is the potentially longest relationship we will ever have in our life. Siblings play an important role in our life. Assalamu alaikum. 
I am Sonia from Chemicals Degree College. Siblings are important for many reasons. There are a lot of things you can't share with your parents, but you can such, but you can but you can share with your siblings, such as relationship, friendship, or school thing. A legend said that I thought it siblings are the angels who lift you up. You who, who lift you up when your wings forget to fly. Siblings help us, they make us laugh whenever we are not feeling well. And everyone knows that the laughter is the best medicine. To the outside world, everyone grow old, but not siblings, but not sister and brother. Our parents met as siblings, but we choose to be friends. When our parents are not at home, we have to take care of our siblings. Siblings were but looking after other side there, we learn how to we learn we learn we also learn how to take care of our all children. All children. People who do not have people who do not like siblings, they said that a lot of times we got scolded because of our siblings. We fight with each other. And whenever our younger sibling commit mistake, our parents scold us. And this is the big disadvantage to having a sibling. But looking after other side, there are a big advantage to having a sibling. Whenever we have a we have a problem, our siblings support us and they help us to get out of our problems. Some may argue that if you have many siblings, you have to share your clothes, parents' attachment and love. But sharing is scary. In the return, we in the return we get a special type of love. A legend said that I got it. Siblings are the only enemy of yours. You can't live life without it. Siblings play a very vital role in our life. As siblings, we may be apart, but the bond between siblings is too is is remains same. Happiness is spending time with your sibling. We know each other hard. If siblings can give you a better advice than anyone can ever give you, they know your heart. They they grow up with you, and they grow up with you, and no one knows you better than your siblings. Thank you. Now I would like to call Zarbano to know to tell us about the importance of freedom of speech. A famous British author once said, "The problem with the stigma around the mental health." It's really about the stories that we tell ourselves as a society. I am a veteran student from Ram Program Kiran Foundation, and I am a student of Hindi Public College. Today, I will be talking about the importance of mental health. Mental health is not only the psychological and emotional well-being of an individual. It is the well-being of an individual. It is the well-being where an individual can emotionally and cognitive ability, cognitive abilities. To meet the demands of everyday life and contribute to the society, mental health is essential in every stage of life, starting from childhood up to the adulthood. Good health does not mean the absence of diseases from our, our body. Good health means we are fit physically, emotionally, socially, spiritually, and mentally. So now we are talking about mental health. Mental health is as similar to as physical health. While we are trying to keep our body fit and healthy, it is also necessary for us to keep our mind strong and healthy. We are living in 21st century, and in 21st century, a one or the four generation face mental health issues around the world due to depression and anxiety. Uh, depression and anxiety are also the type of mental health illness. We are facing depression and anxiety due to peer pressure, poor self-esteem, and family issues. Mental health is a it is a duty that we have to keep our body good and healthy because if our body is strong, our mind is fit. Do you have you ever feel have you ever feel down or sad? Yes, I believe you you have. If you feel sad and down. It means you have feeling, but don't let the feeling inhibit your ability to grow, because mental health creates widespread disabilities, which affect your growth, which stifles your abilities, which let them to not you to not grow. Mental health affects everything. It affects the ability to adapt, the ability to grow, the ability to grow and think. Mental health also affects the abilities to be happy and to be productive. Mental health is a topic by which, which is so often stigmatized in our society. 
if a person uh, an individual facing mental health issue so he is less likely to take help from anyone because of that stigma and shame according to research every poor person in a society can face mental health issue and he is afraid to face doctor because he believes that he is the only one who is facing the problem and the main reason for this is the misconceptions of a society a society has no awareness of mental health and they can blame the person who faces mental health issues and if we continues to blame the person the person is going in the phase of depression and depression is also the kind of mental illness depression can cause societal ideations and different related societal attempts as well the stress is also the kind of mental illness the stress can cause the deficiency and effect our immune system it affects our nervous system it affects our heartbeat and effects and it affects our breathing system as well it means that depression can and depression and stress affects the of our whole body so mental health and uh, there are several ways by which we can by which we can reduce the, our mental illness by which we can lift the, the mental illness number one we we have we have to get in touch with everyone we have to share our thoughts with everyone by by him we can we can believe him so we can share our thoughts with him we can live happy we can think positive we have to be positive to be happy we have to think well we have to sleep well this is a some ways by which we can prevent mental health illness and we have, we can live a better and healthy life mental health and mental health is essential for all and important for all because we will, because its mental health is our need if we think if we think if we think what we are how capable we are how well we are we can rule the world we can rule the world, rule the world and it is our own limiting thoughts that hold us back that hold us back if we think that we are not normal and we are not worthwhile as much so it the uh, thought is that our mind can lie it does not make anyone less of a person who faces mental health issues if we would, would like to live a better life we have to value our mental health i want to uh, i want to conclude my speech with a, with a quote the only journey is the journey within yourself thank you
people can also learn from the experiences and perspectives of one and other. Many people use their freedom of speech as a way of hatred or violence, but the others use it as a way to create a peaceful and better change in society. I hear a lot of people who say freedom of speech brings hate speech in society and it eventually leads to violence and disturbance in the society. But we should, we should you know, understand the difference between free speech and hate speech. Hate speech is a completely different thing. Hate speech is a public speech that encourages hate or, exp or uh, you know, and expresses violence towards a person or a group based on something such as race, religion or gender. Hey, uh, who is responsible for this? Who is responsible for this? Government, private sectors, starting with individual men and women, all are responsible for this. We all must take actions towards it by letting people to speak with full rights. Freedom of speech is necessary for the smooth function of our country. Freedom of speech is also necessary because the citizens will feel confident and then they can be aware of their country. Last but not the least, once Maxine Leggett said, stand for what's right, make your life beautiful, and make your life meaningful. I'm repeating my points again. Stand for what's right, make your life beautiful, and make your life meaningful. Thank you. In itself, it is a precondition for promoting sustainable development and building a good government. Assalamu alaikum, it's me Mohammed Badin from St. Patrick College. Don't you think gender equality, gender inequality affects the country? According to research of global citizen organization, gender equality refers to that everyone should gender equality refers to that everyone should have equal opportunity to achieve the world society, such as in education and jobs employment. In the country where there is no equality, gender equality, that country can never get success and can never be developed. Then the equality is says to promote equitable and respectable advancement. However, in a society there is no equality between men and women. Females are brought up with the aim to get married and raise your own family in future to become a good wife and a good mother, rather than encouraging her to fulfill her dreams. Don't, don't you think everyone gets equal right? Everyone gets right according to their gender. But what about transgender? There is no specific right for them. How can they live? We should give them equal right as per common human. And also women deserve same right as men. However, some people think uh, some people think that gender equality must not be a thing and they find it very easy to make excuses when it comes to the encouragement of gender equality. And when it comes to the encouragement of gender the equality, there is the reason to their statement is that they believe that if a woman starts succeeding in any way and starts to rule a kingdom, she wouldn't be capable for handling her responsibility. Let's like suppose our very formal prime minister, Benazir Bhutto, when she got the honor of running a country, people started assuming that she wouldn't be able to handle her responsibility due to that she was a murder mother and also was, uh, she was married and also was a mother yet she proved herself and managed to, managed to run a country and successfully from a point of view everyone gets right according to their genders we should give them equally we should give them right equally we should not discriminate the occupation according to gender we should give we should give equal, everyone equally as per common human. If we don't want a country to fail because of gender inequality, we should let each and every one get, get equal opportunity in every sector of country. Thank you so much. In return to work alone, then with a the crowd, moving in a wrong direction, do what you feel is right. I am Sufyan, an individual student of Sabin Public High School. I am here to argue about how peer pressure can make you and can fail you. According to the Center of Young Women Health, peer pressure is the pressure which occurs because of the fear that we met one of or rejected by our friends. However, peer pressure has positive and negative effects 
that totally depends on your surrounding and company. It's comforting to face those challenges who are into the same boat that you are. You already know that teen years can be tough. You are figuring out who you are, what you believe, and what are your responsibilities. Sometimes the stresses in your life can actually come from your peers. They will pressurize you to do something which you are uncomfortable with, such as drinks or drugs. Taking, uh, driving the car, taking this means that driving the car. This pressure can affect, this pressure can openly express, oh, come on, it's just one shot and everyone else is having one. But what about those who do not want to leave their social group, but they know their company is not good? Believe me, it's very hard for them to decide what to do at such moment. Peer pressure can influence a person to do which is relatively harmless or which have very serious consequences. The people who can easily influence will follow rather than lead. However, among peers you can find friendship, acceptance and share experience that can build lasting bond. Your friend listens and gives you feedback as you try new ideas. But what is the benefit of that friendship which more badly into drugs or drinks? I am sure the team here can relate well to this experience. To sum up, it's not always easy to resist negative peer pressure. But when you do it, you will feel good afterward. Even you can be a positive influence for them. Consider yourself a leader and you have a potential to make a difference. Thank you. That's what Mandela said. And I quote, We must ensure that color, race and gender become only a God-given gift to each one of us and not an indivisible mark or attitude that accord a special status to anyone. Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is me Dania Anulhaq, the student of Quran Kiran Foundation. Today I stand here as an advocate against racism. The focus of my speech will touch why racism is so means in our society and how we can get rid of this disgusting culture. Before starting my speech, let me clarify what is racism. Racism is an attitude or behavior that assumes someone is inferior because of their color, their caste, their gender, or their religion. Discrimination on the basis of differentiation is not good. Why? Because it creates violence among people, it lowers the confidence of people. Due to racism, people are being judged because of their color. Just because someone has dark complexion, they are considered ugly. This mostly happens in most of Asian and Latin American countries, where people face light skin. According to a research, an African child was bullied by her friend. Her friend suggested her that she should drink more milk so she will have fair color. Now my question is, who gave this statement that light skin or fair skin is a symbol of beauty and dark skin is a symbol of ugliness? There is no single statement about this in any religion or dogma. So why people are being judged because of color? Many people may think that why people just don't ignore it when someone talk about their color or race. So let me reinforce that. It is not so easy that we think, I myself experience judgment due to color. People always compare me with my younger sister. She has light skin. Whenever I introduce my sister with my friends, my existing relatives, relatives, they were like, oh, is she your real sister? She is so fair and beautiful. You both are so different. These are the actions that hurt me a lot. These are the actions that hurt a lot that people can't ignore it. In many European and American countries, people with dark complexion are not considered trustworthy. They are taken as robbers and thieves. They grant an imposter among them. In this way, people are facing discrimination. Many people may think that uh, racism is not real, it's just a myth. No, it is not. It destroys so many lives and directly affecting the mental health of, mental health of victims. People who experience racism have anxiety disorder, depression, post-traumatic disorders, and societal thoughts. So how we can say that it's not real? We don't notice it, but believe me, every day people are judged because of their color, their caste, their gender, or their religion. Not only by color, as I mentioned before, people are also being judged because of belonging to minorities. Minorities' rights are not properly occurred in all around the world. Many object makers may argue that if we are in majority, we own this place, minorities should be dominant. Although according to the article 2 on 1 of United Nations, minorities shall have right to practice their religion, to enjoy their culture and to use their language in any private or public setting without any discrimination. But still, people are suffering from this discrimination. 
Minorities' rights are not properly occurred because we do not accept each other. Minorities' rights are not properly occurred because we do not respect each other. Minorities' rights are not properly occurred because we always think that we are superior. Sometimes we see that churches are getting demolished. Sometimes we see that mosques get destroyed. Sometimes we see that temples are being attacked. In this way, we are snatching minorities' rights. We shall protect each one of us just by accepting each other without any discri uh, discrimination. I would like to end my speech with this quote. In this racist society, it is not enough to be a non-racist. We must be an anti-racist. Thank you so much. Action speaks louder than words. Do you agree? I completely agree with that statement. What do you think about that? No matter how great your words, maybe you will be judged by your action. Assalamu alaikum. I am Jaria Nas. Today I get a chance to talk about action speaks louder than words. You must hear a bit of proverb in English language. This proverb was also used by a parliamentarian at the time of English Civil War. He knew that there is no need to shout strong words when action can do well. This proverb was also used by a parliamentarian at the time of English Civil War. Uh, do action speak louder than words? This may be confusing because action can't speak. Action don't have a mouth. So, what does this really mean? In this expression, action are more important than words. However, words consider as promise that has to be performed. Action and uh, words and action are interrelated. They both go hand in hand. First off, if a speaker describes how to save people from fire, when it really happens, we can do nothing. This is the same behavior like politicians. Politician makes many heart touching promises before election. But after election, we all know how their actions go. So, to do things practically, they show your character how in a mind you are to feel things you say. Secondly, not to forget our people who have inability to speak but still manage so well to communicate. There are several movies and cartoons which have no spoken words, but the message they convey say it all. And children learn many things about just their actions. Not to forget our childhood character Charlie Chaplin and Mr. Lee who create lots of points just by their action. Most of us must have experienced this in their life and it's absolutely as Usually, opponents have a habit of boosting to achieving future and this sounds really much crazy. If they just make castles in the air and feel boost to achieve a greater milestone without actually doing so. Some ideas who don't get talent by making tall claims. When the chance comes to prove, then they fail. Thus, they are only limited words to... Thus, they are only... Words, limited words, limited good words. Overall, I support that action speaks louder than words. Action are not a substitute, but our main ingredient of communication. Action are more sincere than words. However, words consider as promise that has to be performed. Words in action, words on action on words take courage and instead one's character. Thank you. Better than books? So what's your opinion? Are movies better than books? It's a debatable topic, so yeah. let's see who wins today and let's see who has got so much uh, good speaking skills that he is able to uh, persuade others that if the uh, if the books are good, that, uh, are good than movies. So for, uh, from the affirmative side, I've got uh, Abdul Hanan, uh, we've got Javeri Atas and Aisha Munir. And uh, from the negative side, we've got Aisha, Azwar, Rafi and Suzanne. We will be going to start with the first phase of the debate session that is the stance and the claims and first of all uh, team A that is the affirmative side has got the uh, uh, has got the time to in, uh, has got the time in order to perform uh, in order to say their stances and claims so the affirmative side please. Our team agrees to state no
to the cinema theater with their families or friends. It, it gives a sense of belonging and social connection when you watch a good movie with a meaningful message with your friends or a bigger audience. Moreover, it takes time to watch a movie than reading book. After a hectic day at college or work, where people are already dealing with the great amount of print media, why would they want to expose themselves with more printed versions of books or when they need to relax their mind? We believe reading is an exhaust. Uh, read, uh, reading, uh, reading with an exhausted mind can make your eyes more tired. From the negative side, drop it. Our stance is that books are better than movies, and we totally, totally disagree that movies are better than books, and we feel no comparison between books and movies. Movies can never replace books. Our first claim is that there are so many movies who have copied content from novels and books. Books give you imagination. In books, every scenario and scene is written. In film, we see little scenes. You can reread and reread again and again. A book is a gift you can open again and again. But movies, in movies, you have to pause and go ahead, go behind, watch the scene. When we see movies from mobile, phone, and TV, our eyesight get weak, and book gives scenes of life, sense of life. Today, today a reader, tomorrow a leader. If you read, your, if you read, your vocabulary will be good. If you watch movies, your time will be your, your you can waste your time. There is only one thing which can replace book is the next book. <laughs> our, our, knowledge, our knowledge entries when we read books. We learn new sentences from books and our critical thinking also increase when we read books. Sometimes we don't like some movies because they have copied content from other things, uh, from other books. That is why I think movies are not better than books. Firstly, who are actors and who are learning acting from academy, the teacher says that you have to learn about Shakespeare novels because every because book gives you emotion, it gives you feeling, it gives you experience. In, mo in movie, in books, we see detailed things. Books are hundred percent portable. Movies have very limited time to tell the story. And reading is usually cheaper than watching a movie. Thank you so much. The automated side and no, because when uh, when you are in school, everyone uh, should uh, should know how to read. And watching movies also harm your eyes. As you as you said that the reading book is a tiring thing. Reading book is not a tiring thing. And also. Movies harm your eyes because the light of the PC is so harmful. From the affirmative side, Abdul Hanan. I hate from Rafael's point of view that books give you a sense of quality, which is not possible with movies because of their intangible nature. Then later we find that this that. This is an age of virtual reality and digital media. If you look from another perspective, movie and videos do not take away physical space in your shelves and drawer, like books do. They can be watched through Netflix or or can be downloaded anywhere, phones and laptops. You can you can develop feeling of feeling of feeling of longing with the digital version media too because being humans we must we must need to evolve like people move move to printed version of books. Next point I, I want to clear is that Rafi you were saying that it takes too, too much budget. So yes it takes budget but when when the movies are released they pay they pay more than the budget is expected. The budget is spent. And the one who is and the one who is writing the book and the when the book is published, one person is getting the whole money. And he is getting the money and two then if you go to see the movies and there are many
many people who are working in a movie from producer till the cameraman till the man who is cleaning the space they all are getting jobs so it is i think it's the point that we are getting jobs from the movies so what is bad point in it i just uh, want to refute to the opponent team as they believe that uh, uh, reading books affects the brain so i just want to say that uh, reading books does not affect the affect your brain as much as a movie actually does when you watch a movie it has that radiations in it which like damages your eyes and it also affects your brain it affects your mental health physical health emotional health so like reading books is not a big deal and it does not affect your health as much as a movie does I just want to ask from opponent team that if we want to go for a trip, trip, and we don't have any network to watch a movie, but we can read a book. That is why I think in every scenario, book is good, better than movies. And and the third thing, and the second thing is that in Netflix and in Amazon Prime, and we when we watch a movie, we see first that it is underage, but books. Everyone can read books. Who can read? And today, a reader, tomorrow, a reader. That is why I think book is better than movies. Well, I think books are not better than movies just because you are saying if you are if you are not having internet connection. I guess whether you are having a mobile, you can download it and you can watch it online. If you go. If you if you start if you start reading book and sitting on a couch and you are sitting on a couch and you are reading book you will finish 10 pages 12 pages or more than 30 pages but if you want to spend your time watching movie if you if you have got two hours free then you can watch a whole movie and you can read book with sitting with your whole family and spending time like with you are you can't call your friends and you all sit together and watch watch and read the book it's not like that brother have you ever done this from the agriculture side as for i want to refute to anand's point as he said that books uh, we have to put the books on physical uh, uh, which um, shelves or somewhere else nowadays people even read book in digital form i also read books from my mobile phone and i also read comics and now nowadays e books are common and also as i said that uh, I totally disagree with Hanan's point that you can't sit with your family when you are reading. If you are sitting with your family and you can tell them what what, what are you reading, and they they can learn from these uh, from these things, and their vocabulary can also good uh, can be good. That is why I think um, reading book is better than movies. And the third and the second thing is mobile phone. If your mobile phone battery is low uh, when you are on trip, then what will you do? I have a question from now. I just want to say that we find uh, books to provide the liberty of imagination. This, uh, this can be true uh, for those who are good, excellent reader, but everyone is not a uh, good reader. It depends upon how uh, what you read. Is your child child and uh, also everyone got take interest for reading but uh, rather than movies take interest for uh, watching and uh, also movies are good uh, for both the teams i think you are distracting away from the topic Uh, we are going towards the family time, and uh, we are not focusing on the main topic that that is movies or books, as far as environmental pollution, as far as their benefits, and as far as their advantages are, uh, are concerned. So it's, it's a request from my side to both the teams that kindly please uh, focus on uh, these uh, main. Two pages.
it every day. You can take it whenever you want. And, and you are free. Books have no limit. You are free to read at your own pet and enjoy the story on your own time. But I just think when we go for an interview, uh, interviewer don't say that, have you, what is your best movie? He says, do you have written, do you have written a book? Which book do you like the most? That is why I think book is on, book is good from movies. They will ask you the they will if they ask you about the reading the book and the last book you have read, read it was not that you can't tell him then what are you gonna tell him? I have another question for you. I have another question for you. Tell me the name of book that you have finished in a single day. Two days, three days. Actually, we know that imagine we learn from things and we will uh, it, it is the beauty of book that we need to uh, we need in detail. It is the beauty of book and we will know and we will be able to know the imagination and in book in movie we have always see an actor is coming and he is doing something. But in book we will able to know that uh, we will able to imagine that achha, he can be an actor, he can be this type of actor, he can be this type of uh, producer, uh, actor sorry. I think uh, we actually feel things by the When we experience we love to react. And then that is why they are also better. And our brains are sub subconsciously trained to respond to the auditory and visual information coming from the screen. That is why actors are uh, actors are able to sway. They are able to move our emotions by a look or movement or well spoken word. Uh, movies limit limit the imagination of a creative mind. Uh, if, uh, if a person reads books, he can imagine his own self as a hero, as a villain, or as any character. But in movies, uh, we, we see that the uh, actor is uh, that the actor is being, and uh, we see ourselves as an man uh, always. But in a movie, we can like every character, and we can imagine it as we want. But in a movie, you can tell a character is sad, happy, drunk, or more. In books, we can only read words. The books uh, in the book, the words are very creative. That you can know where, what are the words and what they are saying. Okay, uh, I think many of us have read the book of Harry Potter. So how many of you, while reading, have get to know the dress code of Harry Potter? How many of us have read the book of Spider Man? Then you know that Spider Man used to wear that kind of dress. Would you feel that? And and if you are blind, then you can't read. You can also listen. And first thing before reading is that you should become a good listener. And I think in, 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 in movies, people are also speaking. And the, you and you also have the option of subtitles. You can also open the subtitles. You can, you can also read from them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You are still a reader. I have just a question that in movie, there is a guy who is in backside. Will you be able to know that there is from like a uh, you always show the main character in movie, but in book we all show we uh, in book a writer write about all the thing, all the scenario about uh, about everything. That is why I think book are better than movies. And, and and I just want to say second thing that if you have written in, in your chart paper that about uh, as our stance and you are reading from. It. <laughs> Before it was dubbed, people used to watch and watch it in Turkish. Still they were watching it, but they didn't, didn't understand a single word, but they were watching just because they were trying to understand while reading open the subtitle. And you are still learning a new language by watching a movie. How can you read a Turkish how can you read a Turkish book about the Arthur Ghazi? Can you read I think, I think, I think, I think, not a movie, it is a series. And we are talking about movies and books, not about movies and movies. And also, it's a rather based on book on, and on real life story.
Okay, uh, thank you so much for the review to the subject related claims that were in the second phase of uh, the debate session. Uh, now we give uh, one minute time for each team to discuss for the conclusion and uh, to provide the conclusion. So, Aisha from the Akhmeret side. We would like to say that after a hectic day at college or a busy day at work, it is important to relax your mind which is possible by watching a movie, alone or with friends or family. Reading book is a completely different thing which can provide pleasure to people keen on reading and everyone is not a keen reader. We stand by stars that movies are better than books because they provide experience with visual and audio effects. First of all, I want to thank to Javira and she accepts that movies give imagination. And in the end, I would like to say that books are better than movies, whether in physical form or in digital form. Movies cannot give you freedom as books can give you. You can imagine every character, whatever you want and however you want, and they give you ownership. And you can't carry your books, uh, you can't carry your movies anywhere, but you can carry your books. And I insist that books are your best friend. Uh, the book is a film that takes place in the mind of reader. Thank you. Focus in a clean version. As a cat, when a baby is born, a doctor, parent, or a bird attendant announce the arrival of a girl or boy. The space tank in a silent day engaged multiple aspects of our life. There's also something that most of us never question. I am a special town student of second year pre-medical. Today I am proud of all of you to present my speech about transgenders as they rise. Transgenders deserve better. They deserve to be treated as people. They deserve to live in a welcoming and accepting world. No one in our state should have to pay this conviction and this thing because of who they are. We came to more to protect our transgender friends. This is why I strongly advocate in the favor of equal rights of transgender community. Once Larman Cox said, and I quote, We are not what other people say. We are who we know ourselves. And we are what we love ourselves to be. And that's it. Transgender, transgender deserve vital. They deserve equal opportunities like all of us. They deserve uh, they deserve support from us, from society, and from every individual. And it's our task to give respect and support to our transgender friends. Because, because they're also humans, they also have emotions. Imagine yourself in the face, just think how we will feel if our loved ones or family don't want to accept us, the society don't want to accept us. How we will feel, it's very hard to think. Transgender. Uh, some people also think that transgenders are punishment for violence from God and they stand they can't do except uh, gender, uh, crimes and sexual crimes. And I want to give an example of Sarah Good, the first Pakistani transgender doctor from Lahore. She says that because of the operating environment of university and teachers have can come in that position. And, uh, it's all about us as a nation. It's not about one person, it's about thousands of people. It's not just about me, it's about all of us accepting one another. We all are different. Thank you. How many of you are sick of piles and piles and piles of homework? After spending seven to eight hours school, students become tired. They don't feel like doing any homework, but still they end up with a lot of homework. I think students should not be giving homework as it harms the mental health of the students. Monica Parent once said, and I quote, I say, give the students a break. Let them enjoy their life before life gets too tough. So today, I, Aisha Khan from DMC College, wants to raise my voice against homework. As it causes mental stress, health problems, and much more damage to our mind. It eats up the valuable time of kids, which they have to spend with their parents, with their family, and in extracurricular activities. And school complaints, in the end, school complaints that students don't have good relationship with their friends, with their family. Our school giving us time to relax, our 
school giving us time to spend with our friends and with our family. Do you think we are fools? We don't like our parents. We don't want to spend time with them. No, we are not. How can we spend if you give us tons of homework to spend all day? I have always felt that there should be a balance between homework and family time. According to our research, 56% of students consider homework as a source of stress. As a result, it causes sleep deprivation and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of damage. In winter and holiday, in winter and summer holidays, uh, homework even may be a sign of holidays. As holidays are for students to relax and to spend their time with their family, but still students end up doing homework. I think uh, homework should not be given as much. Banning it or making it less would be great and it will give students too time to relax. Opponents will complain that homework has many advantages as it, as it, uh, as it teaches you time management skills. But if you have a lot of homework and you are going to a playground for playing and you will think that you have homework and you want to do homework, how can you play well? And it will harm your health, it will harm your physical life, and it will harm your social life. In the end, I want to conclude my speech with the word of, uh, with the dialogue of a web series, all of us are there, that which, which many of you have watched. Grades are not important. Being healthy and safe is. And life. I strongly agree that positive things need to be considered. One day our teacher distributed the paper and asked us to asked us to answer the question. To everyone was surprised. There was a no question on the paper and there was a just a flag the center of the paper. The teacher told, I want you to write what you see on the paper. Then everyone was surprised. While there was a no question, the teacher was telling us that we are the life is an important of question. We think the positive, we make it positive. The many problem we have to make a solution. Then we will not do it, we don't make it. Positive thinking is important in life. I have so many reasons to celebrate, but we only focus on the dark spots. Our teacher distribute, then the paper, that, then the, all the students wrote about the white or black spots. No one write no one write about the black white part of the paper. The same thing happened in our lives too. We we only focus on the dark spots, we our fear, disappointment that every us. Our life is day of things and positive thinking we should use in time in period of every time in life. Hello everyone, I am Osma. Today I am here to discuss about positive. Positive thing is me that you it's me that you approach this pleasing thing in a broader way. You think the best is going to happen, not the worst. Positive thing lead an individual succeeds in every time of your life. We think positive, not forget about positive thinking. Don't go in negative way. Always think the positive. You will be succeed and yeah. have the problem. You get the problem and have a solution on it. Positive thinking is that we need in every time of doing anything we do. We always think about negative, but we don't think about positive. We should do use positive thinking every time in school, college, everywhere we do. Do you think we should use a positive thinking? Yeah. Yes. We should use positive thinking. Why we should don't use a positive thinking anywhere? We should it. Life is a problem of life is very problem of that. We should make it easy that we can do it. Thank you. Hello. Why boys cannot cry? Why do we tell them they should not cry? Why do we tell them they are they should be strong? Why we are not letting them show their emotions? What do you think? Why do people cry? When they feel sad, right? Men are also human. They can also cry. 
if a man cries it doesn't mean that he is weak crying is a crying is a natural emotion and we all human being are given this emotion without discrimination from god i aryan ikbal the student of second year from abib college at uran kiran foundation as well wants to speak against the motion that boys don't cry dr debra jefferson state and i quote that letting tears flow it doesn't mean that you have stopped on being strong it is a way to cough so that you can carry on being strong in our society when a man cries we tell them to stop we tell them that they are not girls we tell them that why are you behaving like sissy or like a girl or be a man they say be a man they say why are you behaving sissy like a girl according to dr virginia i thought crying is a very healthy expression of feeling such as sadness or disappointment if we tell them to stop if we tell boys not to cry they may be suppressed or avoid or shut these emotions down many people in our society tells that it is wrong for boys to cry it shows their weakness it make them sissy or coward i totally disagree with it men are also human they can also cry it is only our society that dictates that it is unmanly for men to cry thereby leaving most men are suffer from depression and other physical and mental health issues psychologist and psychiatrist should do more on the changing of the mindset that crying does not make a man less of a man <coughs> crying is a very natural part of way that allah subhanahu wa taala designed us to help you cope with your weakness it is a sign of soft heart tears would easily flow from the eyes of sahaba Our old prophet Omar, peace be upon him, used to cry days and in nights in the love of Allah, and he was also a man. Then how can we say that men don't cry? I would like to end my speech in the words of Madhuri Dixit, a famous Bollywood star, that it's not a good idea to say that boys don't cry. We should say that boys don't make others cry. Thank you.
all over the world who are clearing away the hurdles that to many girls face because the evidence is clear educating girls isn't good for the girls it's good for all of us thank you Lama said, "To strong media emphasis on death and violence can lead to despair." So I am Uzaifa Khan from Habib Public High School. Today I am going to tell about how movies or media affect the behavior of children and adolescents. Going to a movie theater can be exciting. Movies can still create anxiety for children with loud noises and upsetting scenes. Viewing movies with inappropriate images, drug abuse, adult theme, and offensive language can have negative effects on children. So the point come in the mind: what is media violence? Media violence is visual portrayals of facts of physical aggression by one human or human-like other kind. Therefore, I believe that media violence needs to stop as soon as possible. The main reason why me. Media violence is harmful to society is that it increases the risk of children and adults behaving in an aggressive manners. A study was conducted by Smith and Boyson in 2002 that analyzed 1962 videos which were drawn ran randomly fro from three channels MTV, BET and VH1. The result showed that 15% of children 15% of videos 15% of videos feature physical aggression second of all media violence might be dangerous for youngsters as children are more likely to imitate imitate whatever they see based on a recent survey conducted by UNICEF and AEM 57% of children surveyed say that they imitate their media heroes by having <clears throat> by having smoking addicts uh, offensive language and vulgarity or or doing similar things opponent believe that movies despite their flaws don't seem to be having a negative influence on adolescents the reason favoring their statement is bad flickers on from within As stated by Peterson Bogdanovich, there are no good and bad movies, only good and bad directors. <laughs> to sum up, I would like to say that films are mainly composed of unrealistic expectation of which people can tend to be like. In my opinion, they have they are having a plethora of pessimistic impacts on young ones. Which would ultimately lead to dis destructive lives. Thank you so much. I'm Mohammad Sadiq from Saint Patrick College. I'm a student of Quran program, and today I'm here to tell you about how unfair life can be. That people people lose even when they do their best. So let's talk about life. So life. What do you think is life? The existence of an individual. But according to the frame. the meaning of life can be found to experiencing reality by interacting authentically with the environment and giving something back to the world through some creativity or self expression and changing our attitude when faced with the environment when faced with a situation that we can't change and in one word life is an opportunity but what happens when life doesn't give you any chance that you strive for what happens that life doesn't give you any opportunity any chance while you are doing your best so while we are on the topic that how and feel life can be so we can talk about how people judge based on their races their financial support their financial status etc so now people have this big way of thinking that they assume that they think that one woman is above another and the amount of position make one greater than other and this happens majorly due to the fact that world is run by money almost in this day and in this age almost everything 
and anything can be bound. Like people, uh, people treat differently where money is concerned, and almost less fortunate people usually ignore and neglect it. And putting all of this on the side, then lies I mean greater problem that nothing in this world goes according to the plan. Nothing in this world goes according to our plans. People assume that they know what the future holds, but they end up being disappointed, disheartened. Ultimately, no one has power to control the future, and we all are pieces of much larger plans. And despite all our effort, we can't control our fate. Now, to end my argument, I would like to present a famous quote, which is spoken in the movie Rocky by the main character that. The world isn't all sunshine and rainbow. It's a very mean, it's a very mean and nasty place. I don't care how much hot of you are, it could beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. But you, me, or nobody is gonna hit you as hard as life. But it is it is not about that how much you are tough. How much you hit is about how much you can take and keep moving forward. How much you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Thank you. Um, the performances today have been exceptional, and that's all down to the efforts by uh, Ms. Uh, Sabina Kansri. Um, we've seen the efforts put in by everyone who had the primary foundation education taken from DCTO campus. And it's a moment of pride to see, I wish my mother was here. She was part of the board members. Uh, she's not around uh, at the moment in the country. And I wish she was here to see this. I will definitely be conveying all the efforts which have been put into this uh, project. And lots of duas for Ms. Sabina to continue this journey and for us to be able to be part of this in any way, shape or form. Thank you very much for our chief guest who attended as well and for everyone else for this opportunity. I was even more surprised when I was asked to be a judge. I came totally unprepared for that. But uh, yes, I was pleasantly happy, I should say, to see the, hear the topics that were talked about. They were very brave topics that need to be addressed by the society at large. And if our children are talking about it, all the better. Transgender rights, gender equality, uh, boys don't cry. These are very important topics that we need to talk about, have conversations about, for a more compassionate society, if I may say so. So, hats off, everybody. Well done. Thank you. And uh, I honestly cannot express my feelings because I know you all since you were like, <laughs> uh, yeah, there were, I used to be their home teacher when they were in grade 8 and now they're all grown up and much are very confident and very impressive young ladies and gentlemen. So I'm really impressed by the event that you hosted today. Uh, the arguments that you had and the topics that you chose. Very, very impressive. And honestly, I don't have words to express how I feel. I just kept crying <laughs> while we were talking. And I love the play that, <laughs> and I don't know which character was it. <laughs> Because, uh, you know what, mom, the seed that we have sown two decades uh, before, it's giving its fruits now. Yes. So, let's get this step together. Alhamdulillah. And I'm really happy. Uh, seems like, uh, like I, I feel like that bird mother, which sees uh, like uh, its children going out from the nest, flying away, but definitely spreading that message everywhere, wherever they go, 
whatever they have learned in that lesson. So I pray for all of you that uh, we all become that ray of shine, whatever we have learned from this place. Because uh, whatever we have been through and whatever we have struggled for, for these all years that we have been here together, every moment has been a learning experience for us, all of us. Even if, if it was a mother, it was a father, or like they were coming here daily or not. Whenever, whenever we have met, we have learned from each other. And we always cherish those moments whenever we meet. So lots of prayers for everyone and the people who are connecting and joining us now. I'm really happy to see that our children are now becoming and uh, like going in the different in different environments and becoming that outreach and bringing other people to come and connect over here. So and there's no time inshallah we'll be seeing it going. Uh, not even uh, I should not say the word. It should it will go to the Mars as well. So thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, I'm honored, and uh, you are always in my prayers. And I'm never uh, like I'm not physically here, but I'm here somehow. Thank you so much. मैंने पूरा सब कुछ अटेंड नहीं किया लेकिन जितना भी किया मुझे बड़ा मजा आया स्पेशली वो जो प्ले वाला पार्ट था वो मुझे अपना बचपन याद आ गया हम इतफा करते थे मैं डॉक्टर क्लास में भी यही कह रहा था ब्रेक में गए कि बचपन में चले गए तो ये कुछ बच्चे हैं जिनको मैं जानता हूँ बड़े छोटे से भी सारा ने यही कहा कि बड़े हो गए माशाला अच्छा लग रहा है कि जो मेहनत यहाँ पर टीचर्स ने की है वो नजर आ रही है तो विश बेस्ट ऑफ लक थैंक यू
this means we need to share and we can live everything. By this formula, by this technique, we can only live everything. So that is how I want to say at this moment. And uh, just I want to say one more thing. I'm a homeschooler. I'm a homeschooler. Uh, I, I don't have opportunity to do formal schooling. My father, my mother, they invested huge time on me in the school, uh, out of the school. I'm a homeschooler. I have five kids, all a homeschooler. This makes you have a great opportunity, which I am not understanding. And believe me, uh, the home is going to be the chapter the parents can do and support this, this lady. She is doing so many things. But in addition to that, using the home school technique, I don't want to say out of this, out of the No. Add your, add your schooling into the home schooling. Ab aapko, uh, बड़े बड़े स्कूल्स बहुत कुछ नहीं कर सकेंगे हमें अपने घर के अंदर भी स्कूल बनाना होगा दिस इज होम स्कूल सो यू हैव टू बेट पेरेंट्स हैं अब वो अपने घरों के अंदर स्कूल बनाना शुरू करें उनके लिए जरूरी है कि वो अपने घरों को अब स्कूल की शक्ल दे दें हम फर्नीचर दे दें फर्नीचर अब हम किस तरह दे दें मैक इट स्कूल हमें नहीं चाहिए अब बड़े बड़े एलसीडीज हमें नहीं चाहिए अब हमें छोटे छोटे कंप्यूटर्स चाहिए और अपने बच्चों को हम कंप्यूटर दे दें दैट्स आई आई वुड रिकमेंड So this is just one thing. Uh, finally, मैं अपने speech को conclude करूँगा एक मजेदार शेर के ऊपर. दोस्तों को अच्छी लगी, तो के नजर अच्छा लगा. दोस्तों को अच्छी लगी, तो के नजर अच्छा लगा. मुद्दतों के बाद कोई हम सफर अच्छा लगा. I have never been to Bali, the I, and the things that learned today about the youth. I love working with kids. I love working with teenagers. It just gives me so much hope. Um, it just makes me feel so much better about uh, the world. Um, I'm from the United States, and I love my country, and I love the kids there. But to be perfectly honest, there's nothing like Pakistani kids. I find, I find so much love and respect here and so much value for things that people in the U.S. take, take for granted. You, know, you value your families. You value your education. I think you value friendship even more than kids over there do. And it always makes me you know, I feel sad when I leave because I leave my fam, my parent, my dad, my sister, my kids at university. But then I come here and there's there's so much to do and so many kids to work with and learn from and enjoy. And I feel like I never stop learning here and I never stop growing. So I'm just very grateful to be here um, and I'm so grateful that I came to um, to visit the Kiran Foundation. I've learned so much, and I'm so excited for uh, to see what happens next and what all of you do next. Uh, you guys have so much energy, and you do so many things, and have so many ideas, and it's just it makes it so much more exciting for me. And I think about the world in a much better way. So thank you for. Good. Thank you guys. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I'm Nadeem Ghani. I'm uh, the Dean of uh, Mitzer A-Levels and we now also have an O-Levels program in a, a primary school called Civitas. Um, I have the good fortune of uh, getting up every morning uh, with an opportunity uh, and I'm really glad to be surrounded uh, uh, by people, young people, young in heart uh, and young in body. Uh, this injury here uh, was my own confusion about being uh, young at heart, but body not so much. Uh, so I was skiing with my uh, with my son, um, and I'm, I'm much better at going up something than going down something. And uh, on Jan 4th, I broke a couple of bones. Um, and it took me uh, kind of 
look at myself in a slightly different way also. There are two, there are two things that I'm particularly bad at. One is I'm a very restless ind individual. So I want to move around all the time, uh, but this helped me um, kind of sit and uh, take stock uh, much more. So that's, uh, that's one thing. Um, and the other thing is I'm uh, very impatient. Um, so I, I, and uh, my wife, Ms. Uh, Ms. Manning, many right here in front, she can attest to both of those things. Uh, I'm always thinking, trying to uh, do a lot of things at the same time, don't wait. Uh, so that's the other thing. Like in the morning, if I am generally up fairly early, and at 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm out driving, um, and that's where I do my best thinking. But now I, I, I can't really drive on my own, and I have to wait for a driver to come. Uh, I had to wait for you know lots of different things. So in a way, I think every little kind of adversity brings with it some opportunities. There was somebody who talked about that spot on uh, a sheet of clean paper, and far too often I think we focus on that spot. Um, but I think there's there are so many opportunities in everything, uh, in every place that we go. Um, so th this this little setback has helped uh, me look at life slightly differently. But I think what I've witnessed here today, honestly, is, is magic, uh, really. Um, I, I'll be very frank, and this is my first visit to the Audi. I've always driven by uh, on my way to the beach, but that was about it. And this little gem that you have hidden back here, uh, I think it touches uh, our hearts. Uh, in a way, and you know, I, um, Ms. Sabine said something that almost, uh, you know, I kind of felt ashamed that it's been a dream for her to have me come here, and I'm thinking, wow, um, I am really not at that level where someone would dream for me to be here, but I am very humbled, uh, I'm very honored to be here to talk to you guys. There are a few things that I want to, that I want to say, some from my life, uh, and some things that I've learned along the way. Uh, but before that, uh, I, I'm tasked with announcing the winner of uh, the parliamentary debate competition that you guys had. Uh, there were the, the topic was um, movies are better than books, and the proponents were Team A. Uh, and opposing that uh, hypothesis was Team B. Um, and even before I, I uh, kind of enough let you guys know what the points said. Uh, I do want to talk about uh, the difference that I feel it's important to recognize between winning and succeeding. Okay. Um, there will be times when, when you outscore your opponent, whether it's in a debate competition uh, or in a football match or something else in any star. Winning can be measured very specifically, right? And that's why we're very quick to react to it, very quick to judge. Um, but uh, there is, and winning is fun. Yeah, but winning is a very short-term phenomenon. You will win today, and tomorrow you may not win. But it's important to recognize that even when you win, you could fail. And even when you lose, you could succeed. Okay? So, if you win, having tried really hard, having given it your best shot, okay, um, not with the intention of making someone look bad, but with the purpose of making yourself look better, I think there's success there, right? And whether the score says you won or you lost, you never have to fail. Okay? And there are lots of you know there are lots of ways and semantics here. Setbacks are part of life. Okay? Learn from your setbacks. Uh, a loss could be a setback. But a setback to me doesn't equate to failure. So even though there will be one team that ends up winning today and one team that ends up losing, and I think let's be fair, sometimes you'll win, sometimes you'll lose, but you can always succeed. Right? Win with grace. Uh, make sure that you understand that humility is part of it. Sometimes you win because you're lucky. And luck is also a short-term thing. Okay? So let's say you put in this much effort, but your outcome is a little bit more. You got lucky. And sometimes you put in this much effort, 
and your outcome is a little bit less. You're unlucky. That these are short-term things, right? And when you win, remind yourself that people prayed for you, remind yourself that people helped, supported, you worked hard, but it's not all you, it's not all of us. Luck has its part to play in the short run. But when you average out your life, right now many of you are 15, 17, 18, some younger, when you're 70, 80, you will most likely end up where you should have ended up. And all those times of good luck and bad luck, good fortune, bad fortune, will generally even out. And right? so you gotta remind yourself, you're, you're up some days and you're down on other days. But as long as you maintain control of two things, which you have 100% control over, one is your manner how hard you're willing to work. And there was another kid who alluded to that earlier in their speech, right? You control 100% how hard you can work. And the second thing you control 100% is your need. Why you work that hard. I don't think you can really control a whole lot more. And as long as you're doing those two things to the best of your ability, let Allah figure out where that road takes us, whether you win today or lose today. But inshallah, if you're on that road with uh, full effort, uh, towards Manat and Niyat, I think I think we land up okay there. So I have to announce somebody winning, somebody losing. Uh, in this case, um, I feel the arguments were solid on both ends. Okay, uh, and this time around, uh, with the, the the scores from the judges, one team got I think it was 65 points, the other team ended up at 70 points. So 71. So it was pretty close. The team with uh, 71 points was Team A. So congratulations to Team A. Um, four out of five, Team A. And would you guys be debating on stage? Um, uh, Ms. Megan, uh, she is an avid reader. I think uh, you asked the point, when was the last time you read a book in one sitting? She, uh, we were talking about it just the other day, or yesterday she read a book. Uh, the last book she was reading 300 pages in one sitting but i'm with you guys I read, i'll wait for the movie to come out of the book she read uh in, in one day so a different strokes a different strokes um, but uh the, the debate was entertaining it was informative it was passionate um can i also get the other team to come up here team b uh, yes, team b come on up guys so team B was, uh, was in favor of books. Uh, if you had won, I think we would have asked Ms. Megan to present the award. But, uh, <laughs> but since uh, it was me, I think it was destiny. So team A, congratulations guys. Uh, if it was okay, I think, I think that, that, was, that was it. Do I do, do I, can I give them a pat on the back? Yeah, All right, come on up guys. Well done. Well done, Good job. Good job. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Okay. And then please stand up for the picture. Yeah. That's okay. Thank you. Well, many people ask me that my father is here. You have to go to the house. There are many reasons, of course. एक अपॉर्चुनिटी है जो हमारे बच्चों के लिए खुलती है जब कोई ऐसा शख्स यहाँ आता है कि जिसको लोग जानते हैं और वो भी एजुकेशन की फील्ड में जानते हैं जिसकी लोग इज्जत करते हैं ट्रस्ट करते हैं अगर आप जाके अपने नेटवर्क में बात करते हैं तो लोग ट्रस्ट करते हैं वॉट यू से सत्रह साल पहले अठारह साल हो गए जब मैं यहाँ आई थी एक एक केस को फॉलो करते हुए छोटे से बच्चे का अब्यूज का केस था उस वक्त मुझे बिल्कुल भी अंदाज़ा नहीं था कि ये कोई रेवोल्यूशन बन जाएगी या ये इसमें जो मेरे दिल की ख्वाहिश है वो इतने सारे लोगों के दिल की ख्वाहिश बन जाए कि बच्चे बहुत तकलीफ़ों से गुजरते हैं और बच्चे शायद बिल्कुल अन से समझे जाते हैं और मैं रोज़ रात को शायद ही कोई ऐसी रात होती थी कि मैं रो रो के आँखें जल जलती जलती आँखों के साथ सोती थी कि मैं क्या करूँ मैं अकेले क्या करूँ मैं अकेले क्या करूँ मैंने उसको सोचा कि मैं अकेले 
लिए और कुछ भी कर सकती हूँ मतलब उसे एक बच्ची की जिंदगी शायद कुछ बना सकती हूँ वहाँ से कैसे लोग जुड़ते चले गए किस तरह यही सोच जो मुझे तंग करती थी कि मैंने मोहब्बत पे ईमान को बहाल करना है बस क्योंकि लोगों का ईमान जो है वो सख्ती पे बहुत ज़्यादा है हमारे मुल्क में हम ये समझते हैं कि जो थोड़ा सा सख्ती से बात करता है वो कामयाब है या जो तकबुल जिसमें है वो शायद कोई बहुत बड़ा इंसान है या जो बहुत ज़्यादा किसी की बेजती कर दे तो हम कहते हैं भाई युवा है क्या पर्सनैलिटी है मैं ये सोचती थी कि इसको कैसे टर्न अराउंड किया जाए कि हम मोहब्बत को काइंडनेस को नरम गोई को रो देने को इस चीज़ को ताकत समझने लगे हैं कि रोना हमारी ताकत है और उस वक्त जब ये मैं सोचती थी मुझे लगता था कि कोई और इस तरह सोच ही नहीं रहा और आज मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये सबके दिल की आवाज़ है कि आप लोगों ने टॉपिक सेलेक्ट किए हैं वो कहीं ऐसे ही सिर्फ किसी को इम्प्रेस करने के लिए सिलेक्ट नहीं किए हैं आपने अपने दिल की बात कह दी स्पीच के दौरान सो हैट्स ऑफ टू यू कि आप लोग माशा से अब ये स्ट्रेंथ की और ताकत की मैं राज देखते हैं क्या होते हैं वो वो लोग हैं जिन्होंने अपने गम को प्रोसेस किया है और प्रोसेस करके अब दुनिया के आगे बात कर पाते हैं ताकि दूसरों को हिम्मत मिले तो जब मैं निकल आया तो आप भी निकल आओगे एक बात पे बच्चों हमेशा यकीन रखना कि जो सबसे ज़्यादा दर्द से गुजरता है ना तकलीफ से गुजरता है वही सबसे बेहतरीन एम्पथेटिक लीडर बनता है एम्पथी आती जगह जब दूसरे के जूते में जाकर आप सोच सकें कि उसको क्या फील हो रहा है हमारे मुल्क में मुल्क में क्या पूरी दुनिया में ही शायद एम्पथेटिक लीडर्स की कमी है सिंपथेटिक लीडर्स होंगे और लीडर्स होंगे कॉन्फिडेंट लीडर्स होंगे पावरफुल लीडर्स होंगे वेल स्पोकन लीडर्स होंगे लेकिन वी डोंट हैव एम्पथेटिक लीडर्स सो आई अनदर ड्रीम ऑफ माइंड इज के दियारी से वो एम्पथेटिक लीडर्स निकले दैट कैन टेक द वर्ल्ड इन देयर हैंड्स एंड दे कैन बी अदर पीपल आफ्टर दैट एम्पथेटिक लीडर्स Honor, honor your pains. These pains come into your life for a plan. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has chosen you to go through some uh, ordeals in life because you have been chosen to do something really big. बस उसको recognize करना है आपने कि okay मेरे साथ ये जो वाक्य हुआ है hmm what am I getting prepared for? मैंने क्या करना है बड़े ओके काम उससे आपको अपना purpose मिलेगा life का कि ये है काम जो मुझे करना है इसलिए मुझे उसके लिए तैयारी कराई जा रही है आई थिंक यू डन प्ले आपने कितनी तैयारी की होगी इसके पीछे प्रैक्टिस 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 एंड व्हाट वाज द फाइनल रिजल्ट यू मेड अस ऑल लाफ आई मीन हैड अ गुड टाइम एंड यू वर सो इंप्रेस्ड बाय यू लाइफ इज जस्ट लाइक दैट यू आर गेटिंग प्रिपेयर 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 फॉर द फाइनल शो मे बी द फाइनल शो डजंट हैपन इन दिस वर्ल्ड इट विल हैपन इन द अदर वर्ल्ड बट वन फाइन डे You will be making a miracle of your own, inshallah. जितना ज़्यादा तैयार ज़िंदगी में इतने बड़े इंटरफ़ेज़ लीजों में लेकिन you have to believe in that. I believe in that. This is a milestone for me to see Nadeem, Mr. Nadeem over here with his family. It's another like you added another happiness to my uh, to my dream because when you came in with your wife, I mean like bringing your family means you you feel this is a safe place, right? And so thank you so much, Nadeem, for being here. And we can't thank Nishan enough for creating this opportunity for us. Um, and uh, Dr. Bilal, our former Prime Minister, he's always been very, very supportive. Mariam has joined us very recently, but uh, indirectly, our relationship goes back to Mrs. Alvi. Uh, Mrs. Alvi, I'm just doing here. I'm just doing here. Alvi, the children who are here, they're asking Mrs. Alvi, why are they not here? बिकॉज जो हबीब कॉलेज के बच्चे हैं वो चाह रहे थे कि हबीब से कोई हो मिस सलवी को मैंने इन्वाइट किया था मैं वो बिजी थी तो शी वॉज वन ऑफ दो फर्स्ट एजुकेशन थ्रू बिलीव इन दिस प्रोग्राम बैक देन इन टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवन जब मैं दाखिले के लिए गई थी मिस सलवी वॉज द फर्स्ट पर्सन हु सेट ये सर बिलीव इन योर प्रोग्राम सो आई ऑलवेज कीप टेकिंग हर नेम एंड शी स्टिल विद अस ऑलवेज सपोर्टिंग एस सो थैंक यू फॉर दैट I have a whole list of thanks. I uh, voted the sponsors were of Propula and Binder Sky. They have supported me, and obviously, Afshin made it happen. So thank you, Afshin, for that. And uh, 
and all the guests who are here, जो भी आए, जो चले गए, उस सब का बहुत-बहुत शुक्रिया। आपने टाइम निकाला, बहुत सारा टाइम निकाला। You were not in a hurry. You came with the whole day, and I'm I'm really thankful for that. इतनी हम्बली। Mr. Nadeem, I already told you this is like a dream come true. और अभी अभी मेरी Mr. Nadeem से अभी अभी बात हुई है कि हम निक्सर के साथ कोई ऐसी partnership करें, हमारे दोस्ती project की partnership कि जिसमें हमारे बच्चे, DCT के बच्चे और निक्सर के बच्चे मिल के कोई any event करें साथ या कोई football matches करें साथ कोई हमारी एक एक MOU एक friendship को develop करेगा। आप निक्सर जाएं निक्सर के बच्चे यहाँ हैं हमारे पास फुटबॉल ग्राउंड बहुत अच्छा है आपके पास बास्केटबॉल कोर्ट बहुत अच्छा है तो वी कैन वी कैन शेयर दैट विद इच अदर इंशाल्लाह एंड बट वी बीच यू इन फुटबॉल एंड वी आर वेरी वेरी हैप्पी आई एम वेरी वेरी हैप्पी दैट मारिया यू जॉइंड अस नाउ एंड वी वांट � Zishan, his mother and myself, we have been together in Kiran since the very beginning. When I say since the very beginning, I tell you, I am telling you, when Kiran was not there, I was just thinking that I had to do something, 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 I had to do something. This is not life, sitting at home, going for gym, sitting at a cafe for coffee, I am like, this is not life. So, Shivana also said, Shivana is the name of Shivana, yes, everything is going to do something. And then, Mashallah, the way you can see the road, and you can see that if you don't have this, then you can't do anything. You know, this is all that you can do. You can do it all. Alhamdulillah. And thank you, children. You made it happen. If you don't have any money, then you can go here from here. You have to hold me. The children who I started with, then when I came here, and when I came here, this place where we are today, we are standing here today, this building history is that this was a torture set. It was a gang's kick up. When we came here in 2014, we came here and there was a narrative in four sides. And the bullets changed the narrative and the story changed the narrative. If you didn't love it in the first year, you didn't love it in the morning, and I was hugging and 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 hugging. If it doesn't happen, then it will happen in one year. So you don't have to do anything, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to do anything. That is the only thing that I take home. Only with the capital. It's your love that I take home. Thank you. 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 Big thanks to all the judges, of course. Parents, students, sub join in our job. Thank you very much. प्लीज आते रहा करें जो पेरेंट्स नहीं आए हैं मैंने कल भी ये बात कही थी जो पेरेंट्स नहीं आए हैं उनको जो पेरेंट्स आए हैं वो घर जाके जरूर उनको कॉल करें अगर आप उनको जानते हैं और उनको बताएं उन्होंने मिस क्या किया है ताकि वो अगली बार आए जरूर बताएं उनको कहें भाई बहुत आपने मिस किया आप जो नहीं आए तो बच्चे जो है यहाँ स्टेज से हमेशा अपने पेरेंट्स को ढूंढ रहे होते हैं मेरे पेरेंट्स मुझे दे ऐसा है नहीं बच्चे होता है ना तो बस आप प्लीज जरूर कहिएगा ठीक है एंड जो जो इस पूरी काविशों के पीछे हैं ऑफ कोर्स आरिफ हैं जो हमारा पूरा और जो जोड़ियां सब हालते हैं बैक हैंड से कि हमें कोई तकलीफ ना हो हम यहाँ आराम से बैठते हैं हमारा ऑपरेशन स्टाफ है पूरा विजान हमारे ऑपरेशन हेड है वो डीट करते हैं हम सुकून से यहाँ इसीलिए बैठ पाते हैं बिकॉज़ � so thanks, Vizan, to you and your team that you're taking care of us so much. And of course, uh, the most important people of this entire program is not going to be man. This event is not going to be because this event is not going to be a very hard work for this event. This is, a, this is a, a first result, I should say, not the last. This is the first result that we see on stage of months and months of uh, an ESL program, an English enhancement program through theatre, through day-to-day um, -day, uh, spoken English, and this is the result that we see over here. So thank you so much to the entire team, the manager of Oran, Oran program, Madiha, raise your hand. Madiha has been with me for <laughs> since she was a baby. <laughs> she was a baby when she came to me, and she's grown up with me. Hafsa is here. She too came as a baby. Then talked to lungs, came back again. Afshin has joined us as one of the freshest persons here. And 
And uh, but he is there of English enhancement teacher who has literally worked day and night with these children. And I think yes, you can show your love to Afshin by giving her a big has to leave for her higher studies and I just can't stop thinking what would we do without her. I hope if not yeah we jaga we baki ke jo months hai ke ye maha ko sukoon hi na hai jane ka laap ke saath. Chikhe wo sirf piyari khenj ke laata hai. Chikhe? Okay. And Abrar you know ne host kiya hara jibay. Thank you Abrar. Again a wonderful addition to our entire team. So many guys. I think they जितनी तालियां तब जब बाहर के लिए बज रही थी जब आप हमारे पास रुक जाएंगे ना पांच साल तो वही तालियां आपके लिए बजेंगी इंशाल्लाह सो आई जस्ट कैन यू गेट इट या एंड थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दिस ब्यूटीफुल टू केस उज़ाफ़ा नाशा बिग 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 � they are presentable, they are, they are pretty, <laughs> they speak well, they can capture the crowd, so thank you, keep smiling. And uh, of course, um, yeah, and all the volunteers who work behind in setting up stages, so a lot of children have helped us in this uh, whole program. सारे बच्चों के लिए बहुत सारी तालियां जो कुरान कुरान के बच्चे हैं निराश के बच्चे हैं सबके लिए बहुत तालियां इस तरह से बहुत लाइन आप सबको थैंक यू सो मच एंड आई एम सो हैप्पी दैट आई डिड इट सारे यहां पर इंपॉर्ट अफशीन टू से द लास्ट नॉट एनी इवनिंग विदाउट रीडिंग व्हाट आई हैव रिटन माय सेल्फ फॉर दिस टेक्स्ट सो आई होप वेल टू वेल एंड आई जॉइन किरण इन सितंबर and now I feel that I've been a part of this place. I've been looking for it. So kids, this is especially for you. I have written. Today we made history. The first day I met these children, I asked them to write what their dreams were. To my surprise, no one wrote a doctor or an engineer. What they wanted to achieve most was unique. To change people's perspective of AI and to make their parents proud and happy. That day, I knew I found what I had been looking for. Several years of yearning to do something different, to give voice to the unspoken, to send light to the candles, waiting to be lit. Never let me get settled at mainstream institutions. It was September 14 when I joined Quran. Their bodies were exhausted but eyes were bright. It wasn't easy, I knew, because I could relate. When mothers would keep food ready because some had to leave immediately, it wasn't easy after full days of college. It wasn't easy after part-time jobs. It wasn't easy after night shifts. It wasn't easy after hundreds of assignments to be submitted, but it was possible with a burning desire in hearts, with the resilience to bring change, with unconditional love from parents, with never-ending support from friends, and with the best lessons from Uram. Today is February 26, 2022, and the ones who would ask me to translate or repeat are speaking their hearts out with unbeatable confidence, unwavering fluency and promising eloquence. Today I'm proud because their dreams came true. They have changed people's mindset of AI. They have made their parents proud and happy. Thank you, Ms. Sabina and Kiran for this opportunity. We have changed the history. I love you all. Students to the stage to collect the certificates 
and we would like to invite uh, if uh, maybe Mrs. Uh, uh, Nadine Mani to give up.